Hi family, it's good to see you again. Thanks so much again for stopping by. So I was reading a report um, a few weeks ago, you know our country was impacted by those who not only lost their lives, but experienced Hurricane Ian. And Hurricane Ian is only one of 15 billion dollar storm related crisis that has impacted our country. And I'm talking about hurricane, uh, tornado, fire, flood. Um, we've had 15, 15 billion dollar storms just in 22 this year alone. And we have to let that sink in because that is an enormous amount of crisis that is impacting lives all around our country. And one of the things when we're reflecting on the scale of such tragedy, one of the things that um, we're at risk of is this phenomenon that's been pinned, compassion collapse. Compassion collapse. That's when and you think about it, especially here, um, dealing with COVID these past two, three years, we have been under the weight of so much grief, loss, death, change, that it has put our human hearts in such a position where we go numb. We, we remove ourselves physically, emotionally, we zone out. There was a, a researcher who spoke to this and, and I'll paraphrase, he said something to the uh, to the effect of when the human heart ha has been so overwhelmed by tragedies such as COVID, such as these big storms, that at some point the human heart decides to check out because what can a mere mortal do but to check out? He goes on to say something to the effect of while it may seem practical and the easy thing to do to check out, we not only lose our empathy, we lose our humanity. And that's no small cost. To lose our humanity, that's no small cost, y'all. So I think about, there's a story over in Mark, Mark 10, where we meet a blind man and he's on the side of the road and he hears that Jesus is walking by. And when you believe, I guess the compassion fatigue must have been pretty high in that day because the crowd is telling him to hush and they're ignoring his cries and he's crying out to Jesus. We know how the story ends, thanks be to God. We have the foresight of being on the other side of the cross. We know that Jesus does in fact heal this man according to his faith. But I think about the fact that the crowd was so against his healing, against his cries. And it shook me to my core that how many people are we passing um, those we hear, those we see, and even those that with spiritual eyes of discernment, the ones that are silent. Who are we telling the hush or who have we gone numb and ignore? God help us to see, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, that our compassion may loom large as children of God. Father, we come to you, God, asking right now that you restore us and give us eyes and ears to hear to help those who are in need, who cry out to you, who need healing. We ourselves can't fix people, God. We can't fix situations, but Lord, we can be the conduits to lift people up in prayer. We can be like our pastor says so eloquently, we can be the feet on prayers. We can be available and willing to do our part. Again, we don't have to be the superheroes of the story, God, but we can be available men and women of God who desperately want to be change agents and do what you have gifted us to do. Father, we surrender all to you and thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that has saved us from our sins. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, thanks family for joining me. I look forward to speaking with you next time. Have a blessed week.